You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama. And we're back. You're listening to Fate Mag Radio. I'm Kat Hobson, your host, with my guest, Kim Johnston. And Kim, there is something that I wanted you to share about Jenny, because if you don't realize, you know, she fought to get back so that she could go and save her daughter after that entity mm-hmm. taunted her. But prior to that, she was a warrior through that experience. Yes, she had been pushed down the stairs in this house. She had gone through so many things that I, I don't even have time to go into. But there was this one particular incident you wanted me to tell people about where she is home during the day by herself. Her husband's at work, um, but she has her daughter in her crib taking a nap and she's downstairs um, knitting. So she has these knitting needles and she hear someone upstairs and all she can think of is my daughter is up there and someone else is up there that shouldn't be and she was terrified and so the only thing she could think of to grab was those knitting needles and she was going to use those to attack this intruder because she really thought someone was in the house with her and she just had to go get her daughter so she crept up the stairs with these knitting needles and she was opening closets and going room from room trying to find this intruder and she was going to stab them and she doesn't find anybody though and but she grabs her daughter anyway and you know they go back downstairs and kind of huddle together because it's just it's so unnerving when you're in those situations and uh, especially when you feel like you know it might be going after your child and um you know, she is brave. She is, she is very brave. brave. She wouldn't think so. She doesn't think so herself, but she is. Well, you know, I am i don't think I would have dealt with that. I mean, that is that is some serious stuff. And mm-hmm. frightening. Very, you know, I, very. She is traumatized to this day, and it's been... Oh, gosh, it's going on six years, and she still cannot really talk about it too much, and she can't listen to any of the audio evidence that we recorded. Um, It just really, really traumatized her deeply. I'm just really, I'm glad that you gave a voice to that story, though, because that was, that was something that needed to be shared. I really had hoped that it would it would help her with that, you know, being able to to toss that experience out, maybe mm-hmm. walk away from it a little bit, and mm-hmm. it doesn't really seem to have. But how did you wind up going from there to paranormal witness? Um, several years after that, um, you know, the producers of Paranormal Witness just they sent out mass emails to different groups wanting to know if they have any interesting stories. And um, I was familiar with the TV show. So, you know, and I liked it. So I thought, Hey, you know, I do have two stories that are fairly interesting that they might like. And so I pitched the idea of them, of the good water home to them. And also Jenny with permission, I pitched Jenny's story And uh, they liked both of them, but since it's paranormal witness and they wanted as many witnesses as possible, they went with uh, Jenny's story over the other house in Coosa County that had such an extreme haunting because there was only a handful of witnesses to that experience. Mm -hmm. So um, we just went through the process. It was months long and it was back and forth and I had to do additional research for them. It was a lot of work. I, you know, had to go down to the courthouse and really pull those land records and really try to understand the history of what had happened there even more deeply than what we had researched before. And, um, you know, it wasn't an easy process and it goes through a couple of um, different reviews and it finally, it went through the review process a few times and it finally made it to the final one and it got the green light to be on the TV show And I was thinking, you know, okay, great, it'll be, you know, sometime in October before it ever airs. But no, 
we were surprised because it, our story was picked for the season premiere and it was like August some, something <laughs> when it actually aired and I was totally caught off guard. I just wasn't ready. We only, they only gave us like two weeks heads up that, oh, your episode's going to be aired. So, um, it was a cool experience. It was, it was. They were really awesome to work with and I, I really got a, a great appreciation for how hard the producers work behind the scene. They stay up, like they interview people, you know, for hours during the day filming and going out and getting shots of different stuff and then interviewing witnesses. And then at night they stay up and review their footage and get ready for the next day and the next round of interviews. I don't know. They hardly sleep. And it's just amazing how hard they work and how, how well they get to know you and your story too. Um, so, and they, they are just, I really felt that they were very, very legitimate. Um, yes, they did take some, you know, creative, uh, <laughs> you know, made some creative things with our story and kind of exaggerated some of the, the parts of it. But, you know, for the most part, we were very pleased with how it turned out when it, made it to the to the tv so well i'm going to be honest here and say that that story didn't need a lot of exaggeration <laughs> right <laughs> that was that was intense on its own yeah it just that was just so bizarre and the reason it was called hank blue kim oh because the rockford house the entire second floor of the house was painted in paint blue. And when I mean entire, I mean baseboards, doors, light switches, walls, everything was paint blue. And we didn't know what paint blue was until after Jenny had already painted over the majority of it. And um, then we started researching, you know, because it was just very unusual that everything would be colored in that, you know, covered in that particular color of paint. So, you know, when we researched it, we realized that it actually has its roots in, um, you know, some of the voodoo folklore of, of haints and what they are. They're evil spirits caught in between the world of the living and the dead. And this particular shade of blue tricks them into thinking that it's water so that they, uh, they can't cross water. So um, it'll keep them out of your house. Well, Jenny went and painted all over all that hate blue paint and remove the protection, you know, immediately when they moved in, she wanted to make it a nice neutral color. And, uh, she had no idea that she was covering up any potential protective effect it might have. That's one of those things that make you go, you know, look back and go, Oh my. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you and know, she you don't know these things. I mean, I knew about the color because around Inslee and stuff, people would paint the underside of the, you know, the roof of their porches that color. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I go to Key West pretty often and almost every porch is paint blue. You know, the roof of the porch is paint blue. Mm -hmm. Every one of them. Yeah. It's just, it's the, it's just what people do. It and, is. And, and We've forgotten, really, the history of, of why we do that. Um, because, you know, when I was growing up, you know, most people thought it was because it would keep the wasp or the mosquitoes off mm -hmm. your porch or away. But it's actually rooted in that, that folklore that came from Africa with the slaves, um, particularly the slaves being brought into Georgia and South Carolina. So that's why it's so predominant in the South. But it's it's interesting because I was riding bikes with my friends down there and they were from Ohio and Nova Scotia. And I was like, look, there's the Hank Blue. And they were just like, no way. <laughs> so then we started really looking and it was everywhere because they had enjoyed your episode. So, oh, awesome. And so that's why we were looking for that. But. You know, I just, I am so glad that, that you shared that because both of those incidents, I don't know if something had permeated 
that environment prior to the Indian Wars. But those two incidents alone are enough to cause so much unrest, especially with the slaughtering mm-hmm. of innocents. And but the the cavalry people and the the video preacher when he took out that young lady. Yeah, that he, mm-hmm. they were slaughtering innocents. Mm-hmm. And you can't do that and avoid. Yeah. So your research is impeccable. <laughs> oh, thanks. How long did you research that before you wrote that book? Oh gosh. Um a year. I want to say it was a year. I think we began working with the um the uh paranormal witness producers in like November and um you know the book came out like the following August so almost a year and we had already researched it a little bit before but not quite as in depth um before we started working on that episode so well I'm glad that you did because that's an excellent book all of your books are excellent and Brenda and Chad is telling you that this has been a great show with you i think so too but would you like to let people know how to find you sure um you can go to my website it's scareofal.com uh you can also find me on facebook um i've got several pages hank blue the rock for haunting is uh, one of the pages and then haunted Shelby County, Alabama and then haunted Talladega County. And uh, then we have a Facebook page also for our scare team, which is scare of AL as well. So, um, and then of course you can just email me if you want to, it's Kim at scare of AL.com. So those are all the ways you can get in touch with me. And you're great at responding too. So That'll be cool. And if you have questions or you want to buy the books, the books are available on Amazon. They're also available at Barnes and Noble, Books a Million. Mm -hmm. And you can order them at scareofal.com too, can't you? Yes, you can get autographed copies. And I do have some of the Hank Blue books that are autographed by Jenny as well. I don't always have those because she very rarely will <laughs> will sign the books, but I do have some in stock now. So if that interests anyone, I do have some of those now. Terrific. And, you know, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming tonight and, and giving us your time and, and sharing your information. This has been really terrific feel like I haven't seen you in forever so thanks it's been I know. great <laughs> I know thank you I'm so glad we got to catch up yeah me too and you know I, I just want to let all of our listeners know that I am so appreciative of every one of y'all y'all support us so well here and you know tomorrow night Paranormal Pride is back Wednesday I will be back with Paranormal Experienced, and I will be hosting Marie D. Jones. If you don't know who she is, you better find out. She's amazing. She is a writer of so many diverse books. She's a great researcher. She's a screenwriter. She is one of the most open-minded and fun people on the planet. You're going to love her. And then Friday, it's going to be Ghost Talk Radio with 187 PI and Shelly is going to be discussing cases, hauntings and cases that have been solved by psychics. And then next week, I am going to be interviewing Andrew Smith, who is the curator of the Flatwoods Monster Museum and executive director of Braxton County CBB. And he's going to be discussing the amazing Flatwoods Monster. It still takes so much interest you know, so much history to get to these things. And this case is still discussed all the time. I believe it was the first sighting of a spade headed. Almost had to be an alien, but they're not sure what it was. So we're going to talk with him and get some information from him about that. So thank you again. And we'll catch you next time. Same cat time.